I'm doing this video because I'm really excited about some cool little babies who were born here in my yard. They're really cute little critters and they represent hope. Welcome to Somatic Wise. This channel offers a practical exploration of the relationships between humans, nature, and well-being. Today's episode is about butterflies. I'm focusing on the monarch butterfly, the graceful royalty of the insect skies. This tiny, amazing little creature has a legendary multi-generational migration over thousands of miles, one of the most amazing phenomena in the natural world. Its numbers are plummeting, but you can help and find satisfaction and joy in doing so. Here's a quick review of the larger context. Rather than being a sign of individual pathology or neurosis, eco-anxiety generally involves a normal distress response to the widespread devastation of our natural environment, and in fact, to all the bad news we are faced with every day. In fact, ecotherapists are finding that the overall sorrows of the world are significant underlying contributors to individuals' anxiety, depression, and various forms of acting out. All these problems and crises tend to feel too big and too overwhelming, too big for us to do anything, and so we turn away. But it's not true that we can't do anything. It turns out taking effective action is really powerful. There's plenty we can do to help both nature and ourselves. The deeper I look into this, the more I'm convinced that helping nature and ourselves is really the same thing. And this particular action is quite the pleasurable one. Well, because butterflies. Along these lines, I try to have it where all the plants at my house are either edible or native. If I have a spot in my yard open for a plant, then that's an opportunity to feed me and or feed the local wildlife. This is my own response to the urgency of habitat loss, and I feel joy and relief in being able to do this. And this brings us to the predicament of our beautiful monarch butterfly. When it's in California, the monarch needs this lowly little plant. Well, it looks okay. It's not really flashy. It's called the narrow-leafed milkweed, or Asclepias fascicularis. The narrow-leafed, or Mexican world milkweed, is a modest little plant. It's not particularly showy. Its flowers are kind of plain. It dies back every winter. We think it's a weed. So we cut it down in droves and we don't plant it. But monarch caterpillars can only eat milkweeds. That's all they can eat. And so, in short, the babies of our beloved monarch have nothing to eat. According to monarchbutterfly.com, the main reason for the dramatic decline of the monarch population is that development has taken away most of its habitat and its food, and then we've also given it the wrong food. I'm guessing that these factors of land development and well-meaning but uninformed people generally choosing other plants, that those are probably true in other states as well besides California, even though your native milkweed might be prettier than ours here in California. Aha, you say, but I planted some milkweed in my backyard. It's tropical milkweed, Asclepias curasavica, I think it's called. It's pretty and it flowers year-round. That's good, right? Well, actually, nope. As it turns out, there's two things. The first one is that the monarchs need their food source to die back in the winter because this drives their migration south to warmer climates in Mexico. If there's a food source where they're at, then they don't leave. This disrupts many thousands of years of their natural cycles. Basically, it messes them up. Number two is tropical milkweed carries a parasite. It's a tiny protozoa with spores. It gets into the caterpillar's body, which means that some of them don't even hatch from their chrysalis into butterflies. If they get a smaller dose of it, the adults might look okay from the outside, but actually be weaker and unable to migrate. So, Sounds serious, right? Here's what we can do to help monarchs and start restoring their populations. Number one, plant native milkweed, locally native, in your yard, at your school. Plant it. Be patient with it when it dies back in the winter. Even if it's a really boring little plant, it's essential. We need lots of locally native milkweeds all over the place. 
The narrow leaf milkweed provides food and habitat for many other insects as well, including other butterflies, bees, wasps, and beetles. One thing is that you should be aware that milkweeds produce toxic chemicals. So it's actually good for the monarchs. It protects them from predators. They're bitter and the predators can't eat them. So for us, it's important to not eat or consume any part of this plant. Number two is it's important to plant other beautiful native flowers that the adult monarchs eat. In my California coastal sage scrub habitat, the monarchs love my verbena lilacana, that is the lilac verbena, and the Encelia californica, the California sunflower. Both of these are gorgeous and they flower nearly year round, so having food around for the adults. Number three, get rid of your tropical milkweed. Botanically, it just doesn't belong here, it belongs in South America. Some people say you can get away with using it, but I don't really agree. I mean, why even mess with it? We have these nearly maintenance-free plants that the monarchs have used for thousands of years, and we know that it works for them. The stakes are really high here. For us, our choice of which plant to use in our garden is such a small thing, but for them it's so important. Why take a chance? Number four, say no to pesticides and herbicides. Herbicides and the plants that are ready for them kill native milkweeds. Number five, we can all learn about the monarch and other butterflies. There's a bunch of good websites out there, lots of education. I'll post a bunch in the video description. Number six is to lobby against pesticides, herbicides, and especially land use change, the development of our open spaces. No matter who owns the land or who stands to make money from it, we have to leave some of our nature habitat alone. Number seven, do what you can to help stabilize the climate, which really does impact monarch migration and survival. For example, you can work to reduce your car usage and animal product consumption and encourage others to do so as well. Have you planted some native milkweed and seen monarchs growing up in your yard? Or have you planted similar plants for other butterflies, thus helping reestablish the local ecosystem? Then please post here in the comments section and enjoy these beautiful, graceful little creatures. Thank you for watching this video. If you would like to support my work of getting this information out into the world, you could subscribe to receive notification of future videos, you could contribute to my Patreon account to support this channel, and of course please feel free to share this video with others. Take care, until next time, be well.